Hi, Coherer. Is it real? Is it fake? Can you close a switch remotely using a lighter? I shall rectify this now. Rectify now. Well, in my last video, I saw a video suggestion from four years ago on Coherer Effect, in which someone places some aluminum balls in a cup between two aluminum plates, and if those balls touch continuously, they close a circuit like a switch and the light turns on. But then the balls started touching when he fired the regular lighter close to them and disconnected when he tapped the cup. What does fire have to do with closing a circuit? But then, after four years, I searched for Coherer Effect and realized it is real and it doesn't have anything to do with fire. But in that video, it supposedly happens by those tiny electric arcs that jump in the lighters with piezo igniter. You know what? That thing seems easy enough to make. Let's put that video to test first. Let's take a glass container and tape two aluminum electrodes to its sides. We make a bunch of aluminum balls. Connect a lamp series to this coherer switch. Connect the power and pour the balls in. <laughs> Bad connection. Try again. Oh, it's on already. Turn off. I right. can't get to disconnect the balls come on less ball <laughs> don't shove your finger in a pool of live balls come on this oh, there you go only very few balls in there now now the question is will the balls connect together and create a short path adjacent to some electromagnetic interference Maybe not strong enough? My magic wand can make stronger pulses. Nothing? Maybe a few more balls? Turn off! Maybe if I use a low voltage DC battery? I just use an LED and the coin cell 3 volt battery. Put the balls back in. Now the LED is definitely off. Let's try it. It worked. It, it works it, it feels like magic <laughs> how far wow there you go from quite a distance and with such a low power arc <laughs> how <laughs> I wouldn't believe it if I hadn't seen it myself. But it works with a like a low voltage DC. <laughs> there is no magic, just a battery here and LED there. See? It turns on. Disconnect the balls and the arc connects them. Wow. This is magical. And this is something that everyone can do at home too. Not happens very often on this channel. But why coherer? Is the tiny arc moving the balls around so they touch? Maybe I can make a contraption to test it. So I made this contraption with six balls. Four in the center are hung from the strings and the two on the sides from wires that connect to the battery and the LED. And if I push the balls together, and connect them, the LED turns on as the circuit closes. Now, if I use my lighter, stop swinging. If they keep moving and don't touch, there is no way for them to link up. <laughs> Why is it so sensitive to my sound? See, all the balls are already touching, but there is something between them that is blocking the current. Now, if I make an arc, 
There is absolutely no visible motion. Bo. 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 And they disconnect from the air vibrations from my sound. <sighs> Have to return to the cup coherer because it's much more stable. Boop, boop, boop. <laughs> I guess it's less sensitive to sound and vibration too. So here's my theory, because Wikipedia just says metal balls or particles cling together under high voltage. What the hell does that even mean? I say all these balls that are barely touching but not making an electrical connection must have a super thin, like nanometer thin layer of, say, metal oxide between them that is isolating them electrically, although they are actually touching. The electromagnetic radiations from the tiny arc must be inducing a high enough pulse of voltage across the balls that breaks through that super thin isolating layer connecting the metals. And of course, if you push two balls together hard enough, you break that super thin layer and make a connection. Which means, if you put too many balls in the bucket, their weight might push them together too hard and they never disconnect. But what voltage falls across this coherer cup of mine? I connected a probe across it to my scope and hopefully we'll capture something. Ready? Oh, there's something. Let's get closer. Wow, this is large. So these pulses are like 40 volts of very high frequency voltage across coherer. Let's see if we can figure out the minimum required to turn it on. They could be as small as 10 volts. That's nothing. With only 10 volts across so many balls, it means we only need like a volt or two to break down that super thin layer between the balls. <laughs> And that's why it never disconnected when I had 120 volts across it. The voltage was too high. Let's see if we can try this with a DC supply. Okay, I replaced the battery with a power supply and put a series resistor with the LED so it won't blow up. Now let's see what maximum voltage across the coherer we can read before it breaks down. We'll raise the voltage slowly. It's 1.4 volts now. Two, three, four. Ooh. Turn on at around four and a half, five volts. That's very little voltage. But there seems to be different levels of connectivity too. Let's just check its resistance. Okay, just the resistance of the coherer. You do one click. 0 0.4 ohms almost. Pretty small. <coughs> resistance rose. 350 ohm. And if you click again, 2 ohm. So every click makes the connection a bit different. Here's one from far, a little bit closer, better connection. Even closer, even better connection. So stronger pulses make better connections. Wow, such small voltage is required to break that isolating layer. Must be extremely thin. What a ball breaking phenomenon. And I guess that required voltage changes significantly with the weight and volume and material and environment and whatever. But we need a pulse of higher voltage first to make the connection and then the 3 volt power supply to maintain it. Do we need a power supply to maintain the connection? I connected my 3 volt battery back and the LED is off and disconnected so that there is no voltage across the coherer. Of course, if I connect it back and click, the LED turns on. But if I disconnect and click and reconnect, the LED turns on. I disconnect, reconnect, disconnect, click, connect, turns on. Great! So the coherer creates a stable continuity without a need of a power supply. Well, that's great! What? Why do we have like 10 to 40 volts of spike across the coherer? Don't we have like a 3 volt supply across the whole circuit? Shouldn't that clamp the voltage down to 3 volts? Aha! See? These wires act like antennas picking up the energy. But they are also inductances isolating these high frequency pulses from the battery. So we get high enough voltage to cohere our balls. So 
It's like wireless communication. And that's what they used it for ages ago. They placed smaller balls or metal particles between two contacts and if there was a strong enough electromagnetic pulse, it would close the coherer. They would sound the bell and bang the coherer to disconnect it. And that's how the early Morse code machines worked, I think. Which means, if I add some antennas to my setup, I should be able to increase the range. Here, I remove the metal cover of my lighter, so you see one side and the other side of the piezo igniter that creates high voltage difference across it. Hi! Here, I have like a meter and a half of a wire that I connect to one side of the igniter and another like two to three meters of wire that I'll connect to one side of the cup. Now if I click my igniter, there you go. Let's see how far we can go. I'll put it all the way back here so we can see it in action. Maybe hang the wire somewhere up here for better reception. Okay, let's give it a try from here. Oh, it works. How about here? No problem. Back here. Ha! Easy. Even a bit further. Ha! There you go. I don't think it'll work this far. No. I have to go closer. Yeah, from here. It's like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine meters away. For longer distance, we need better filtering, resonance circuits, bigger antennas, and all for what? Morse code? And what is this good for? Nothing more than a party trick. I mean, in this day and age, we can probably do much better than balls. And it's not super reliable either. It just needs one tap to disconnect. Imagine you're on a fast boat banging on the water trying to receive a message. Dear Abdullah, are you getting my message? Hey Abdullah, it's Afsane messaging. What is she saying? Want to eat shawarma, comma, dine out? She says, eat and die. What? <laughs>